Well, welcome to this video, everybody. And tonight's video, if you work for Kenwood, Icom, Yesu, or any other manufacturer, you might be interested in watching this because we're going to come up with some things that we, as users, want. So welcome. I just want to talk about menus. I'm a linear, is it the right word, a linear, like a Kenwood, the old Yesu, uh, the current Kenwood TS990, where you go menu, section seven, go all the way down. Uh, it's at 5.2, switch that bit on. Now, I mean, yeah. I like that, but that's because I'm possibly old. But the 7300 and 9700 and stuff, or 7900, whatever, that's push button, like a like an Android or an iPhone, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. Do some people prefer one menu to another type system? I think so. I, I certainly prefer the ICOM system because um, I find it very intuitive. Um, but I imagine there are, and but in... in the way in which touchscreen has been implemented on icom versus how it's been implemented on yesu for instance because the things like the ft dx 101 and the dx 10 and the ft 710 have got yep. a have also got a touchscreen interface but it's done in a different way right. to how icom have done it as you'd expect and i prefer it on the icom system i find it a bit more intuitive but okay I'm sure there are people out there who will go, no, actually, the ACU way of doing things makes sense for me. And who's to say one is things better than the other? So we need um, USB for both sound card and remote. And do we then need an RS-232 as well, Jonathan? Yeah, actually, yes, we do. Because thinking about it, because some amplifiers use RS-232 control. So, yes, we do. Some of these manufacturers, Kenwood particularly, have got a multi-pin everything everything that switches amplifiers it's got audio in and out and everything else what's your preference do you think jonathan i, I think i'm very happy with a, a multi-pin connector because mm -hmm. i don't think that anybody is going to be wanting okay i think it'd be rare to want to use everything from that connector yeah uh, and as long okay. as you get a, a din plug with you know, some flying leads in the box which you most do now it's be all right Okay, a minimum amount of coax connectors on the back should be what do you think? Uh, minimum two. Yeah, so two like SO two three nines. Yeah, and as Jeff just said, um, he 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 wants um, receive and transmit for each VFO. We'll come to dual VFOs in a minute. Uh, personally. I'd want two receive jacks, but that's maybe I'm odd. Maybe the manufacturer thinks, oh, to hell with it. If they want more than one receive, you know, they're clearly an uber geek and they can have a blooming switch, you know, and that's up to them. I think it then comes down to how many VFOs you're putting on it. But yeah, I think you would be in the minority of people needing multiple receive yeah. antenna sockets. Yeah, I think so. Right, in the modern day, I think we should have an external display. Of some description. Yeah, what I do agree. What do you think? Well, it needs to be HDMI. HDMI. Yeah. I, I, what, quite why HDMI hasn't been adopted across <sighs> amateur radio, I'm not entirely yeah. sure because, you know, yeah. D DVI seems to still be winning. Um, but some yeah, in, in, $2 license fee or something, probably. Yeah, and it needs to be HDMI. Yeah. So that's at the back. Now, should if it's a reasonable base station now, should it be mains or 12 volt? De de depends on the price point, if I'm honest, because I think, and also depends on the output power. If we're looking at yeah. just 100 watts, then I think 12 volts is fine. Yes. If we're looking at sort of 200 watts, then either it's going to need to have an external power supply next uh -huh. to it. Yeah. Or internally, um, yeah, I, 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 I think if it's 100 watts, 12 volts is fine. 100 watt radio, 12 volts is fine. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I actually agree, agree with that, okay, because it keeps the size down as well. I, I think, and, and I'm going to be in the minority here, I want a second mic socket on the rear. I think I agree with you completely. Because that would make... It's such when you're using a headset or anything, you know, unless you're using a fist mic that's plugging into the front, I yeah. find it such a pain in the backside to have to have this funky connector sticking out the front for it, in my case, for it just to go towards the back of the radio anyway. Okay. Well, I were on mic sockets, 
do you want the old sort of CB or, or, or eight, eight pin, pin or seven round, or do we go for this in what I call uh, RJ45 or whatever it is? Um, honestly, I don't mind. Probably right. uh, eight pin round because if I wanted to make my own cable up, it's going to be easier to solder yeah. an, an eight pin yeah. round than it is to crimp an RJ45. Yeah. But yeah. I, I'm not fussed. Okay. And I can see the benefit on a small mobile radio why they put these little sockets in because they're little PCB mounted. It takes up less. The thing is with a um, a big chassis mount, 8-pin, it's quite a big thing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it is. If we take that 920, was it the old? It was yeah. a big beast, wasn't it? Probably not yeah. a lot in it, actually. It was a big BFO on the front. You got the display. But we're going we're gonna to modernise. We're going to give it a reasonable... You know what do they call it? A TFT display, some sort of yeah, you know, so five nice six thing. inch thing. That'd be nice, yeah. Mm. Nice big display, nice nice waterfall uh, on it. Uh huh. So I'm not going to come up with all the knobs and switches, but we need enough for doing day to day work, like filters, your EQ, maybe. You know, if you if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, I tell you what, I definitely I just want a button. And, and my 990's got it, but it's hidden somewhere. I can't remember. Because sometimes I want to go between, let's say, FT8, SSB, you know, and something else, AM, and a completely different settings. And the 7300 kind of does it, kind of already does that, because it, it remembers... Oh, we are stored, oh, I didn't know it does that, does it? Yeah, so you can, in the 7300 on, on one of the later firmwares, and the same applies to the 705 and the 9700 as well, it has profiles which you can set up. I've got three 10 meters buttons. Yeah, you know, I've got 10 meters one, 10 meters two, 10 meters three. I could probably select one of those and that would go, oh, I remember what you were doing then. So actually yeah. probably my, as a user error that is. Is there anything that is currently not on a front button, your know, front panel button? Wouldn't mind like a little block of six or something that I can program particularly what I want. Programmable buttons. Yeah. Do, do okay. other have that? Do that other companies have that? The buttons that don't do anything until you tell them, I want you to do this when I hit it. So ICOM, I don't know about Yesu, but ICOM, you can change the function of a button. Okay. Um, so I think on the 7300, you can change two of the buttons, um, regardless of what it says on the knob, but you can actually change what the function of that button is. Yeah, um, okay. I've never done that, but I know it yeah. does. I know you can. Yes, okay. Let's just talk remote control. Kenwood's got a fairly archaic piece of software to run a very expensive machine, right? It does yes. work. It does work, but I would expect it just to be a little bit more whiz bang. And what about the 73? Does the 7300 have a really nice piece of front end software? You can do everything from mic gain, EQ, the lot. Yes, it does, but it costs. That's the thing. So ICOM has the RSBA1 software, um, which is beautiful. It's Windows only, unfortunately, uh, but it does work. It works better with radios that have the server function baked into the radio. Um, so 7610, 9700, 705... And even old radio things like the 7850 and 7851 have the server function in the radio. You literally there. plug the thing into your router, give it an IP address, and you can get yeah. to it. You have to do a bit of port forwarding. Yeah, okay, um, well, that's fine. But, you know, it's, it's very easy to do. So that's, mm. um, yeah, it, but it, it's not free. Um, and before someone gets ahead of me, yes, WF View also exists, which is free. Um, mm -hmm. That works okay um that is at least cross-platform so you can use that from you know from mac and linux as well mm -hmm. but it doesn't look as pretty okay uh, wfu is for icom only as far as i'm aware anyway okay. um because it uses kind of the same protocol that the icom software uses um if you just wanted something running locally on your computer which could talk to your radio so you can change some basic functionality, yeah. um, then FL rig is pretty good. 
what's the two and seventy fancy radio that I've no, got? Ninety seven hundred. Ninety seven hundred. So I've got to pay what a hundred pounds or something to get the software to remote control that. Uh, yeah, about that. So you can. Okay. The the problem with that is that ICOM UK won't sell you the software on its own. Um, oh. So you can so with the, with ICOM UK would only it's from a support point of view because yeah. otherwise they can't verify your purchase. So they will only sell you this control software with the fancy VFO USB plug-in control, which is really nice. It's a nice bit of kit, but it does add about 150 quid onto the price. I just don't understand why they don't just give it away. I mean, surely if they give it away, more people are going to buy the the hardware because the software is free. You know, I mean, that's so low. People are going to buy more of your stuff because the software works. While we're on about the software, and we spoke about the front, the rear panel, and we spoke about the rear microphone jack. I mean, this is a bit of a dream, and I don't know if you're going to believe me here, but I would like more than one sound card in the radio. Is that crazy or not? No, because I'd also like more than one sound card in a radio. Right. Okay. Why would and you like? Okay. I suspect my reason is similar to your reason. Okay. I want more than one sound card in a radio so that I can pull audio out to multiple computers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like that as well. Or send it somewhere else. Yeah. Or send it somewhere else. So, for me, in, if I do any live streaming from on no, on the radio, I'm using one computer in order to get sound in and out of the computer that I might be running digital modes on, for instance. And I, I want yeah. to leave that alone. I don't want to be messing around. With I know. Mode. Yeah. And then I use a separate computer for streaming, which I need to get audio from or audio into. So I have to rely on the DIN connector on the back of my 7300 in order to pull out the receive audio. <laughs> Yeah. Um, which works, but it would be so much easier if I could just plug in another USB cable. Yeah. I want to send different audio to it from different places, maybe from a mixer, maybe from a computer. I want you to imagine uh, you can buy a single VFO radio box, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want to then buy a second VFO for it one day and either clip it to it on some fancy thing or like a ribbon cable or something from behind to make it a two vfo radio from a single vfo radio that's what i would like don's got a vf what likes a vfo four vfos john is that for real can you do that with like a flex or something yeah oh you've got slices on the flex so you what can does have, that mean so you can essentially have like eight receivers wow basically Wow. Oh, I see. John uh, has just uh, confirmed that for us. Oh, right. They're called slices. That's interesting. Okay. Now, a lot of us have got tablets, iPads, phones, or whatever else. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to wirelessly connect your tablet, iPad, whatever else? Oh. Just to see the dis extra display. Yeah. yeah does, you, you that, are... does that happen? You are talking my language now. So uh, there is a third-party application. Again, I'm going to talk ICOM here. I'm very sorry that I'm talking ICOM. Mm, okay, that's so um, there is a third-party application called uh, SDR Console, I think it's called, uh, which is available for both uh, iPad and uh, iPhone. I don't believe there's an Android version for, of it. Um, mm. But it's by the same guy that developed essentially the same software for Flex, um, and a guy called Marcus over in Germany. Uh, right. So you can remote control your... Uh, no, it has to be a radio. So remember I, I said earlier on about radios that have the server function inside them yes. for the ICOM software. So if you have yes. one of those radios, you can use this software on your okay. iPad or your iPhone oh. um, to connect your radio from wherever you are on the world. Yeah, SDR console. Uh, works for many ways. Yeah, it, it, it can be made to work with... I have it working with my 7300 as well. And the way you do that is you use the WFU application that I mentioned earlier on, for, so your computer is acting as a server. Um, but it, um, it works really nicely. Plug and play for two meters or 70 SEMs. This is where the outboard matching transverter if you like you can call it the k3 k3 certainly had a transverter board for four it meters, did sure. it had a two as well actually. yeah it had a two it had, did have a two meter transverter yeah board. 
So uh, you could put that inside, couldn't you? You could either buy the outboard two meter. I think the, the K3 had an inboard two meter. Might have even yeah. had a 70 sound. I don't know if you can fit the 70 and two no, in at the same I, time. I, but I'm sure you could only fit one transverter board at a time. And I'm sure the same is on the K3, the KX3 right. as well, where you can only have one transverter board. So, you know, a little tiny KX3 if you wanted one. You could have it on four meters or you could have it on two meters if you wanted it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I would like to see be able to to install at your own spec mm. the number of transverter boards you wanted. Yeah, um, that'd be good. Um, and yeah, Don's right. The Sun SDR, um, yeah, that does have a two meter uh, module in it. Uh, Is there anything I, else you think? I would like the ability to plug a keyboard into it, but maybe okay. a mouse, and run applications like WSJTX, FT8, or something for PSK on the radio itself. Would you now? Yeah. And I mean, I know Kenwood's that had that for years. Kenwood, Kenwood has had it for years, but not for things like FT8. I know that um, with... Yeah, okay. I know that the MB1, for, oh, again from Sun, uh, Sun SDR, that will do that, because essentially it's got a Windows computer inside it as well. Um, but I, I, I think that would be would be nice one of the reasons ham radio deluxe couldn't put ft8 is because it was a commercial product not ham radio oh, deluxe, ham radio deluxe is commercial so yeah. oh right i see because they were charging for the software so yeah, yeah yeah oh that's interesting yeah so that's why we're not going to be able to get ft8 on it that all right so if you work for icom yesu kenwood whatever else um this might have uh, been interesting. I'll put a list in the description of all the things that we would like to see on our radios. All right, so in the meantime, this video is coming up here. See you on the next one. Bye for now.